Hi students, today we're going to go over Unit 3, Module 2, Session 5, Read, Write, and Compare Decimals. Here we're going to see complete the chart. The first one's been done for us. We have the base 10 numerals and we have the expanded form. Looking at the first number, we see 7, decimal point 043. So here we're thinking 7 is in what place value? 7 is in the 1's place value. So we're going to record 7 times, we're going to record 7 times 1. And we're going to add that to, looking at the next place value, it's 0 in the tenth place. So we're going to say 0 times 1 tenth. And we're going to add that to 4 times, what place value is the 4 in? The digit 4. It's in the hundredths. So we're going to say times 1 over 100. And looking at the 3, the 3 is in the 1,000th place value. So we're going to say 3 times 1,000. The next number we see is 4 decimal point 570. To read this out properly, we say 4 and 570 thousandths. Now let's record this in expanded form. 4 times 1 plus 5 times 1 tenth plus 7 times 1 over 100 plus 0 times 1 one thousandth. So in the next one we see we're going to go the opposite direction. 3 times 1 plus 6 times 1 tenth plus 1 times 1 one hundredth plus 3 times 1 one thousandth. So we have a 3 in the ones place, a 6 in the tenths place, 1 in the hundredths, and 3 in the thousandths. Next we have 6 in the ones place, 4 in the tenths place, and 9 in the hundredths place. So we see 6, 4, and 9. The next one we're going to go back to writing it in expanded form. So we're going to see that it's 0 and 317 thousandths. And so we're going to say 3 times 1 tenth plus 1 times 1 hundredth, because in the hundredths place value, plus 7 times 1 one thousandth. Next, we have 1 times 10 plus 8 times 1 tenth plus 6 times 1 one hundredth plus 3 times 1 one thousandth. So is our first digit going to be in the ones place? No, it's going to be in the tens place. Do I have anything times 1? No. So let's, let's think about that. 1 times 10, the ones coming in the tens place value like that, and we have 8 in the tenths place. 6 in the hundredths, and 3 in the thousandths. Number 2, we're completing the chart. This time we're going to write it in word form. And so the first one's been done for, for you. Let's look at the next one. We see 6. We could call this 6 tenths. Because we see these zeros, we know it's also 600 thousandths. So both answers are correct, because we know that both those numbers have the same value. So again, we could say 6 tenths, or you're just going to record 1. You can choose 600 thousandths, right, 600 thousandths. Now for some of you who are like, well, this is Dunlap, isn't it also 60 hundredths? Yes, but probably you're only going to either record the 6 tenths, or you're going to look at those two zeros and see where it ends, and that place value is the thousandths. You're probably not going to call it 60 hundredths. But yes, that would work too. 60 thousandths. Looking at the next one, we see 1 and 503 thousandths. So you're always going to list the place value the last digit is. So where's this place value this 3 is in? The thousandths place, that's right. So we're going to say 1 and 503, 500, let's try that again, 500, 
three thousandths. So if you notice, the only time I write and is when there's a decimal point. Look in the next one. We see one and thirteen thousandths. So if you notice that zero, we're not going to say zero or anything. We're going to think of this number, 13. We can even kind of cover up the 1 and the 0, and we can say, what do we call this when we see a 1 and a 3? That's right, we call it 13. But what place value does a 3? It's in the thousands, so it's going to be 13 thousandths. So go ahead and write that down. 1 and 13 thousandths. And then we're going in the opposite direction next. We have two and two thousandths. So we have two and two thousandths. So that's in the thousandths place value, so it needs to look like that. And look at the next one. 37 what? You're right, 37 thousandths. So we're going to say 37 thousandths. Next, we have 40 thousandths. So we're going to write that like this 40 thousandths. Number three, list the decimals from problem two in order from least to greatest. Include the example. So now, looking back here, which of these numbers is greatest? Right. This two and two thousandths is the greatest because it has two holes. Do any of the other numbers have two holes? Or I guess two ones? No. So that is the greatest. Two and two thousandths. Let's look at which one has one in the place, in the ones place. We see three of them. Now which one's the greatest? The one where the next number, the tenths, is the largest. Right, this one is 1 and 893 thousandths is the next greatest number. And then from there we can see the next one would be 1 and 503 thousandths. And then next we would have 1 and 13 thousandths. From there, we're going to move into zeros in the ones place. So you see three of them have zeros in the ones place. We'll look at the digit next to it, the tenths. Which one has the biggest number in the tenths place value? That's right, zero and six hundred thousandths. So we're going to go ahead and record that number. And that's a decimal point. And next largest, second to least, not quite the least, second to least would be zero and forty hundredths, or excuse me, forty thousandths. This one, zero and thirty-seven thousandths, would be the least greatest. Number four says fill in the bubble to show which, the, which of the two decimal numbers is greater. Use numbers, words, or labeled sketches to explain your answer. How do you know the number you've selected is a greater? So which number is greater? Let's see, both numbers have one in the ones place. Look in the tenths place, one has zero and one has two. So the one that'd be greater is the one with the higher number in the ones place. Therefore, the answer is, excuse me, not ones place, the tenths place. The answer is one and two hundred thousandths. And now you can, you're going to explain that in several different ways. You can show picture, words. We're going to move on to number five. Write four decimal numbers that are less than one and four thousandths. Okay, so there's many different numbers, decimal numbers that are less than one and four thousandths. So you can go ahead and write some. Really, any decimal that starts with zero in the ones place is going to be less than one whole. Right, so you can start, have those. So like 0 and 9 tenths, you could say 0 and 87 hundredths, you could say 0 and 95 hundredths, you could say 0 and 915 thousandths, 
all those numbers are less than one and four thousandths. Why? Because there's a zero in the ones place. So all those decimal numbers are less. Looking at number six, it says write four decimal numbers that have an even number in the tenths place, an odd number in the hundredths place, and a prime number in the thousandths place. So first we kind of have to think, what are prime numbers? I know prime numbers would be 1, 3, 5, 7. Our prime, let's think of the odd numbers. An odd number would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And an even number would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 0. So I've been writing four different numbers that have even number in the tenths, odd in the hundredths, prime in the thousandths. So it doesn't really matter which one I choose. Let's think two, one, one. So what would that number look like? It'd be 211, 211 thousandths. The next decimal I'm going to make was in the next numbers. 4, 3, 3. 433 thousandths. Now you, you can write any decimal that these rules apply to. I'm just writing down a few examples. 6, 5, 5. So that would be 655 thousandths. The next one would be maybe 8, 7, 7 which would be 877 thousandths. Looking at the challenge, it says Rob babysits the kids next door every day after school for one and a half hours. He earns $3.50 an hour. How much money will he earn in six weeks if school is in session five days a week the whole time? Show your work. So let's look at some key information here. He works for one and a half hours after school. He earns $3.50 an hour. It's asking how much money will he earn in six weeks if school is in session five days a week the whole time. So let's think about what we're trying to solve here. First of all, how much does he earn when he is working for one and a half hours? It's not $3.50, it's $3.50 an hour. So how much would he earn in one and a half hours? So I need to think three times or three dollars and fifty cents multiplied by one and a half so really I can think what is half of three dollars and fifty cents three dollars and fifty cents divided by two equals one dollar and seventy five cents I add that so that, that's how much he makes in half an hour I'm adding that to how much he makes in one hour, and I'm going to get $5.25 he earns every time he works for one and a half hours. Because I took half of $3.50, he got on that half an hour, that was $1.25. How much did he make in the first hour? $3.50. So how much did he make in an hour? One and a half hours, five dollars and twenty-five cents. And I'm thinking, how many days total is he working? So I'm told if he if he works six weeks, five days a week, so five days multiplied by six weeks equals how many total days? That is thirty days. So now I need to take five dollars and twenty-five cents times 30 days. So I can think of that as $5.25 times 3 times 10. So what is $5.25 times 3? So if we're not comfortable with multiplying decimals yet, one thing we can do is we can do repeated addition. So $5.25 plus $5.25 plus $5.25 and I see that is $15.75 and I'm multiplying that times 10 and 
So my answer here, when I multiply by 10, it's going to increase the value of my digits, one place value, shifting all of these digits. And so the answer, this number is going to get larger. So from shifting all the digits, what does 15 become? This 1 moves into the hundredths place, 5 moves into the tenths place, 7 moves into the ones place. That's right, the answer is 157. Point five, but I'm talking money, so this is going to become 50 cents, $157.50 is your answer for the challenge. And that's all for today.